Okay, so now we can work on uh, trying to get these things into vector shapes and manipulating them to look more like the logo that we want. So um, I have this M and I have this W. These are my originals. And what I want like to do is I would like to go ahead and select them both because I don't want these to get messed up in any way. Um, I want these to stay editable in case I mess something up later. So I'm going to select both of these. And I, if I do Command G, it'll automatically put them into a group, which I can label, and I will call it original typography, or original type. We'll just do that. All right, and there's my original type. Now, I can duplicate this whole folder. And so now I can also just turn off my original type layer so that I'm not going to mess it up. I'll just leave it alone. In fact, if I wanted to even, you know, well, I guess I'm, I don't need to lock it. I could lock individual layers, but I don't need to do that. So if I turn it off, that won't let me work on it. So instead of this one being original type, we'll call this vector shapes. Or let's do vector type. Okay. And I'll expand that. And now what we have is we have the M and the W, but they're technically still regular typography. In order to manipulate these corners to start making them match up, I actually have to convert them to shapes because I can't modify actual types, letter forms, without them being vectors. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, select both of these layers, which I've, I've already done, actually. And then I'll go up here to the Type menu, and I'm going to choose Convert to Shape. And then you'll notice in the layer panel, it denotes that it's a shape with this little vector symbol down here. It's no longer type, and um, you, so you can tell that way. And I, I will need to duplicate these, but before I do that, I want to just double check these letter forms and make sure that they're the way I want them to be. So if I click on the W, I'm going to blow this up a little bit. And I might have been a little bit hasty before um, in terms of where I placed this, because I, it's really important to me that that really key components match up, and uh, I'm afraid that maybe some of them don't. So, like, if you look here at where the W has its uh, sort of like the nexus of its joint, it's the point is right here, but the M is overlapping it a bit too much, and uh, it might work out though if I move this point over to this area. Um, but then the problem is that the blue is going to be jutting out too much, and I can move that blue point in. So it might work out. So let's just try that. Um, while I have the W selected, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and I can't, I can't select this point with the black tool. All right, I have to choose this thing called the direct selection tool. So I'm going to choose let me blow this up so you can really see it better, okay? Um, whenever I select this point, you see it turns dark, whereas this one is still hollow. Uh, it might be hard to see on the screen, but these are hollow. So that tells me that only this point has been selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and then hold Shift to constrain the axis down, and I'm going to drag it over so that it meets the sort of like the edge yeah, I guess that was okay. So that it meets the edge of where this M is, okay? And then I start to look at it, and so far it's okay as long as, well, it's not actually okay, because when I moved the, the W part over, it still isn't in line with where this point is, and it's not overlapping in a way that I find to be very good. So I'm going to undo that just by doing my Control-Z. And what I think I need to do is, uh, as I said before, I think I was a little bit hasty in how I arranged these letters. I think that I need to go and I need to choose my black selection path tool, and I need to scoot the M over a bit. Okay, And so I can do that with my nudge tool. And what I'm really kind of paying attention to at this point is if I click the W, I'm looking at where this point hits. And that's kind of important to me. And let me blow this up a little bit more. <clears throat> 
and you can kind of play around with this however you want but now they're intersecting perfectly now but the 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 issue that um, I'm gonna have is that whenever I adjust where the M uh, the top of this M falls I'm probably gonna pull it in over here uh, when I do that that is going to pull this over a little bit more so let's just try it and we'll see what happens okay so uh, I'm gonna take the orange and then now I need to go to my direct selection tool and I need to only select this point I'm gonna hold down shift to constrain it and see what happens if I keep pulling it in and it looks like that's kind of the the place where I need to stop I need to go back a little bit and you'll notice that I start to still see this blue here so I think that I would be wise if I pull it in like maybe just a tiny hair more I would be wise to take the black tool and move my M shape the entire M shape nudge it over a little bit and then you'll see that it actually meets down here and it meets right there at the crux okay and then what I need to do is take my W the top of the W and pull that in over here so that it stops peeking out over in this area and over here so let's take the direct select tool and I'm gonna select the corner of this W and I'm gonna pull it in and then we're all good and then you'll see if I zoom this out you'll see that what I've got is it's a little thicker at the bottom and I'm fine with that because it's gonna look like this thing is sort of folding and wrapping um, now what's if you look at the other logo it's sort of split down the center so that it divides the color well to do that I'm gonna have to start eliminating some points and making these paths different but the thing is is if I start eliminating the points right now let me show you what will happen I'm gonna have some incomplete shapes so to eliminate the points what I would do is I would uh, take the um, pen tool and I can choose the delete delete anchor point so I'm gonna delete these anchor points and what I would want to do is like have the M just sort of come all the way up here and stop I would want the W to stop here but then I'm gonna be missing this step basically the stem in the center or this leg but let's just try it and I'm gonna have to undo this and I'll show you oops I that was the wrong point there let me select uh, I need to select the M and not the W okay so I'm gonna get rid of that edge and I'm gonna get rid of that point and then you see what I have here is I have the this portion of the M well the thing is I need something in here and I could do the same thing with the W too but I still need that center section so I'm gonna undo what I just did oh it's in yeah sorry I need to go back to my history forget that I'm not actually in Illustrator I'm in Photoshop so um, and then now what I would like to do is so that I can reproduce this center is I'm gonna take both my M and my W over here in the layer panel and I'm gonna drag it down to the little page icon to create a copy of both of those and I'm gonna rename them so where instead of M copy I'm gonna call it M center and those are gonna go on top and this will be W center And unlike um, <clears throat> unlike Illustrator, if you're used to using Illustrator, we can't group and ungroup objects, vector objects, in Photoshop quite the same as we do in, in Illustrator. But at least we can use the vector objects here. Now, what's going to happen is that if I turn these off, you're still going to see what's underneath, and that's kind of that's kind of nice. Now. Um, just so that I can distinctly see the difference between the tops and the bottoms I'm gonna go ahead and color the W that uh, that's blue I'm gonna instead have it be light blue I'm gonna go ahead and make it that darker blue and just as a refresher this is what it's supposed to look like so that the light blue sort of folds into this darker blue and this orange folds into this bright red and it's like cut in half kind of so we can kind of in fact if we want to keep that just handy for reference well we'll just go ahead and do that um, so I need to make the the W on top I need to make it let me go back to my selection tool and we'll do it this way there we go 
Okay. Uh, and then I need to do the same thing with the M and I need to make it red. So let me take the tool, select my layer, and we're going to change that to red. Okay. So now we will be able to see distinctly different colors when we start eliminating those points. So let's go ahead and let's start with, uh, let's go ahead and start with the M. Well, because I am on top of the center section, what I really want to do is I want to eliminate everything off of the M except for the center section. So I'm going to select the M and then go over here to the pen tool and use my delete anchor tool. I can start deleting all these anchors. Now I can do them one by one like this or if I choose the direct selection tool, the other thing I can do is I can draw sort of uh, like this. I can grab all of those points. I don't know if I can actually manage to do it. And grab all of those points like this so that they're all highlighted and you can see these are empty and hollow. And I can just hit the delete key and those go away. Okay. And so now what we're left with is this center section. And if I turn the eyeball of that off, okay, then now what we are looking at is this dark W where we can do the same thing. I can basically select all of the points that I don't want to keep. So it would be these points. Okay. Hit delete. And then now I've got this stem. And um, if we take a really quick peek, let's just go back and double check. Okay. And then what happens is that the blue gets wider at the top and the red gets thicker at the bottom. So <clears throat> let's... Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and we're, we're going to, while this is selected, I'm going to remove this anchor point as well. And so it'll cut over like this. And then I'm going to turn my red back on. And actually, I think probably my red needs to be underneath the blue like this. And then you can see that it that it's looking okay, except you can kind of see the red peeking out over here. <clears throat> so I, I should probably go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to blow this up so I can see it better and see what's really happening. I probably should move the blue anchor point over because no matter what, the red and the orange are both going to be underneath it. So I'd have to move two things. So let's go ahead and just scoot this blue over just a smidgen. Um, so what I'll do is I'll pass selection tool and then uh, I can select this blue on top as long as I have the blue layer selected. So um, anyway, I, I make sure that you have the blue layer selected on top, the dark blue center. Select this, and then now what you can do is take that corner with the direct selection tool. We're going to select that corner, and we're going to move it over just a smidgen. There we go, and that looks better. Let's try to zoom out of this. And that doesn't look too bad. Okay. And, oh, I think I have this set to a uh, fixed size. All right. So this is going to be the, the basis of our logo. And if you uh, wanted to make sure that it's, you know, basically centered, then, um, and it, it's pretty darn close, you can go ahead and do a path selection where you select all like this. Okay. And actually, you have to make sure, my bad, you have to make sure that the actual layers are selected. And now what I can do is select all of them. And I can use my nudge tools to kind of nudge them around. But this looks basically pretty centered because the top here is close to intersecting a point, And then so is the bottom. And let's, we can, to just double check that. It's very, very close. But if we want to be a little bit more precise, we can be. We'll nudge that over a hair. Zoom back out. And then this is the, the basic uh, vector logo type, but without the circle. In the next video, it should be pretty short. We're going to wrap up that part of it.